This is a Rotke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rotke of Rotke Mods, and welcome to this episode where I show you how to upgrade the hard drive in your first generation through fourth generation Apple Time Capsule. Now, this system right here is a fourth generation 2 terabyte model, which I will be upgrading to an 8 terabyte Western Digital hard drive. Now I know for a fact that people have upgraded these to a 8 terabyte hard drive and I'm not totally sure if if the first through third generation time capsules support 8 terabytes but I do know that they do support 6 terabytes and you can upgrade the hard drive to any size you want as far as I know and any type that you would like by just following this tutorial. Let's begin. While the system is still warm, you will want to peel up the rubber pad on the bottom. I would recommend using a butter knife to help you, and starting from the back would be easiest getting under this lip right here. You just pry it under it and start pulling up like so. You want to use an even, slow pressure, pulling it across and slowly peeling it up without ripping the piece off like I just did. Darn it. Just keep pulling on it and try not to rip it. This can be pretty hard to do, but it will come off. And it's very easy to tear, which I'm tearing quite easily right now. But anyway, just peel it off, and as you can see, I've been having issues. If your pad starts ripping, and you don't want it to rip, you may want to use a hair dryer to heat it back up. And just keep heating it as the glue hardens again, heat it up more, and keep doing it until you get to the end. So far, I haven't ripped this whole area. And once we are done with everything, you can heat the metal back up and the glue should restick the bottom. To keep from tearing more, you can use the butter knife to get up under and just work it around the glue, trying not to shove the butter knife through and keep just working it up. Once you get the base off, in mostly one piece. We can now remove all the screws in the bottom, which is a number one Phillips head for each screw from here, 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 and so on. Every screw you want to remove. Once all the screws are out, you can go from the back and lift up. Now there may be wires and other things connected, so you will want to be careful and not pull up instantly. Like for instance in the fourth generation you have a cooling fan right here which you will need to disconnect from the logic board. And then you just continue lifting up making sure everything is perfect and it will come right off. At this point you can also clean the fan if you'd like to. Now here's your hard drive assembly. You want to disconnect these connectors and carefully disconnect this heat sensor and take these small little screws out but you can do that after you pull the drive out these screws once you have the connectors disconnected you can now start pulling the hard drive out and there is your hard drive now like I just said remove these screws here and put them in your new hard drive that allows the drive to sit without moving in the case. Here's the new drive versus the old drive. The old drive you can now take and use in whatever application you would like. Now let's install the new drive. The new drive is installed and connected. Now don't forget to put the heat sensor back on to the drive. Once you have connected the drive and the heat sensor, we can now put the base back on and screw it back together. Remember to also reconnect your cooler fan. 
Now, before you completely reassemble your system, I would recommend plugging it in and verifying that the drive does spin up at least. Now, to put the pad back on, I would recommend heating up the metal plate with the hair dryer and then sticking the pad back on, pressing down. If you need more adhesion, you can heat up the pad and continue to press down until it sticks. Once your pad is back on, we can now hook everything back up and then go to our Mac to go to the airport utility. Okay, once you plug in your time capsule, you will notice that the orange light will continue to blink on and on and on. From the airport utility, you will be able to click on here where you will see a notification that will say, Internal disk needs repair. We can go to edit, and from here, we can click and click erase disk. We'll name it whatever we want, which in this case, I will be naming it Jason Gregg hard drive, because Jason Gregg is what my network is called. We click erase. It will ask if you want to continue because it can't be undone. We click continue and it starts the process. I have now gotten two notifications now saying that the disk needs repaired and that the station is busy. Right now the station is taking care of itself formatting. And here we go. It is all set up. If we go back to edit, we can go to disks, and here we go. All eight terabytes shown. Now in Finder we can go to our time capsule, open up the folder, right click and go to get info. And here we go. We have all eight terabytes being shown. And that is how you upgrade your hard drive in your first through fourth generation time capsule. Well anyway, that is the end of this episode and thank you for watching. This has been a Red K Mods video.